Believe it or not, but it's been almost three years that I've started producing music. And while I did a lot of the right things to get me where I am today, there are a lot of things I didn't do correctly and had to figure out on my own. So this is the video that I wish I would have seen before starting my journey and how I would go about learning music production if I could start over again. AKA why I would never choose FL Studio as my first doll. This video is sponsored by DistroKid, but more on them later. So I broke down this video in four parts. The dot trap, the exercises to progress, my recommended resources to use and the winning new producer mindset. So what I mean by the DAW trap is that I personally lost a year trying to produce music on a DAW that just didn't work for me. As a result, I struggled for months trying to coming up with new ideas, I struggled trying to learn a new genre I wanted to make, and to be honest, I didn't really feel inspired to create music. Sometimes it even made me question if I was made for music production. If I could go back in time, I would absolutely experiment more with free trials of DAWs to try them out before committing to one. It would have both saved me time time and money. If that interests you, the DAW I am referencing is FL Studio and I switched for Logic Pro, which I explain in more details in this video. Now I'm not the only one with this story, here's another example, but worse. Someone recently told me on Instagram that they had given up altogether on music production because they couldn't figure out how to make a good song. They got disappointed, lost interest in making music, and thought that music production wasn't for them. Luckily, they gave it another try on another DAW this time and everything went smoothly. Since then, they never stopped making music and they are enjoying their craft. That is how important choosing the right DAW for you at the beginning is. This is why there are multiple options for us to choose from, so take advantage of it and try different ones before committing to one. It's like dating, really. In terms of exercises, what to do, what to learn, here's what I recommend. Number one, do not skip music theory. It is so much more important than you think you cannot make an emotional song if you don't know which chord progressions, key or note achieve that results the best. I personally spent one month going over Tone Gym's Basics of Music Theory course before I even started producing music, but to be honest, it's not enough and I would spend more time on it or at least continue learning about it on the side of music production. Music theory will help you take your songwriting skills to the next level, you will produce songs with more intention, therefore they will connect and grab your listeners more and you will be able to put more storytelling into your tracks. As an example, just a few weeks ago, an intermediate music producer just messaged me on Instagram telling me that she was going to stop producing for a little bit to go back to the basics music theory. Why? Because she feels stuck when it comes to songwriting and feels like something's missing in her songs. Don't make such a mistake and take the time to learn music theory sooner than later. Number two, prioritize learning an instrument on the side. Learning piano helped me immensely in making better songs. If you struggle to come up with good melodies or good chord progression, it will help you break the barrier that you have between your head and your DAW. It opens a whole new world of creativity just at the tip of your fingers. During the coaching sessions that I do, I often see my students being stuck in the piano roll, they feel constrained to the bar's rhythm, which often results in very robotic melodies. So instead, by playing the song, it will become more natural, more human, and it will put 10 times more emotions into your songs. Now, I know there are some exceptions to the rule, but I guarantee that it will help you speed up your learning of music production by having some knowledge of an instrument. Let it be piano, guitar, drums, you choose. Number three, watch from start to finish tutorials. If you've been following me for a while, you are probably tired of hearing me talk about this, but this is the best way to make your first songs. Before trying to make your own, recreate exactly what people do in the video as much as you need to. But the main important detail here is do not focus on making it sound professional or as good as you can. It's not about making the best song, it's about making a song, your first song. It's about understanding what goes into producing a track, the steps, the workflow, how they all work together, the arrangement. This I did correctly, but if I could start again, I would do way more of these before trying to do my own. Number four, the last exercise that I would focus on way more than I did at the time to learn music production is to do remakes. It's honestly the best way to learn. Learn from the best. It will push your ear to analyze everything and you will learn a lot more than struggling to make your own. But for that to be useful, it has to be done at the same time as making your own. So I would do 50% remakes, 50% your own. One thing that I would do exactly the same though is to start releasing my song as soon as the first one. Doing so helps you connect with your audience, it takes them on the journey with you and they can see your evolution. These days we're moving towards a community building, people want authenticity. And to release my songs independently, I've been using DistroKid since day one. DistroKid is the music distributor that allowed me to distribute my songs to all streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Deezer, Beatport, and many more. The reason I chose this one is because their subscription model allows for unlimited uploads. You don't have to pay every time you want to release a new song, which is making it the cheapest 
cheapest option if you release more than three songs per year. The upload process is very simple, they guide you through it, it helps you generate promotional content for your song, including a pre-save page, and I honestly never had any issues with it. In order to be able to choose the release date, you do need to be on the Musician Plus plan, which is the one I took, but don't worry, I got you. You can get 7% off your first year by using the link in the description. Now, in terms of resources, the internet is filled with educational content, which sometimes results in us feeling lost and not really know where to go. To make it simple for you, I highly recommend paid online courses. I know it's probably not what you want to hear, but I have to be honest, and they're paid for a reason. It's because they're great and they work. They are such a time saver. One thing I did correctly was to start instantly with a masterclass. I took the one from Studio with Kaigo and documented everything if you want to check it out, but this class gave me a six month worth of progress in just 30 days. They made me so productive by having deadlines and projects to hand off, plus it motivates you as you are with other people going through the same program, sharing your progress and songs. Now this one is just an example and what I did, but I highly recommend courses that have a private community and projects to hand off, as you will learn by doing. Another incredibly helpful resource is to find a mentor, someone that offers regular one-on-one -one coaching sessions. It will help you avoid some mistakes, make faster progress, but most importantly, having someone to push you through the hard times and keep you accountable. Additionally, the main resource that helped me learn piano, as we talked about it before, is Melodics. I had their desktop app since day one of my journey, and my only regret is to not use it as much as I should have. When being self-taught, it's hard to know what to practice, how to learn piano. Melodex gave me that structure through their guided paths and courses. And in the same idea, Sound Gym and Tone Gym have been two websites that I used a lot to learn more about music theory and uh, mixing. They are basically the gym for your ears, giving you five little exercises per day to work on those two skills, and they include a lot of free courses that are structured in small digestible videos. So all those resources are great to have, but the way I recommend you to use them efficiently is to dedicate time towards learning and to actually put in practice what you learn. For example, you can see here in my calendar for the whole month of November, I had time in the morning before work to watch a couple videos from the free music theory course on Tone Gym. All right, now the last part, and in my opinion, the most important, having the correct mindset as a new producer. I know you're probably tired of hearing that word mindset, but it is truly what will make the difference between someone that will succeed at learning a creative skill and someone who won't. Having the correct mindset from the beginning will make sure that you enjoy the journey more and don't give up. First of all, learning music production takes time and you need to be okay with that. You will not produce the next Martin Garrix track in the next five months, it's just not realistic. Try to reset or manage your expectations so you don't get disappointed. I see many new producers trying to focus on making the best sound ever or trying to focus on achieving the best professional mix, whereas they haven't even made one song yet. At first, you should focus on the composition stage of producing music rather than how it sounds. The quality will be something that you take care of later down the road. Speaking about time, at first it is going to require a lot more effort the time you get past the first hurdles of learning music production. It will get easier over time, but you need to get the reps in and to show up every single day over a long period of time. A great book I read that helped me understand this concept is The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. From that day, I knew that I was embarking on a journey for years, not for weeks, and I was very excited about it. Another important tip that I have for you is that rejection will happen. It's unfortunately part of the game. Music is very subjective and what you make will not be liked by everyone. Even your favorite artists have people that don't like their songs. It's just taste and colors. Try to remember that every time someone doesn't like your music to try to not let it affect you and not give up. Finally, as I've been sharing my journey on social media from the beginning, I got to talk to a lot of beginner or aspiring music producers. One common trait I noticed is that they often ask me questions that they could have easily googled and get the answer in just 30 seconds. I've fallen into the trap myself, but my point here is that you have to be curious and a problem solver. Can't find how to automate a serum knob in Logic Pro? Google it. Your door is getting stuck at the opening of a project? Google it. Chances are other people ran into the same problem as you and found some solutions online on forums. More often than not, it just takes me about five minutes to find the answer that I'm looking for. My point here is that you shouldn't let a small issue bring you down or stop you from working on your song. Now I know we live in a world where we don't have time, we want to learn everything rapidly, which is why I made this video here where I share seven ways that you can learn music production 10 times faster. But in the meantime, keep learning and I will see you in the next one.